Once hailed as the future of air travel, a flying palace that could carry over 500 passengers across continents in pure comfort, the Airbus A380 was supposed to change aviation forever, but today, its production has ended. Many airlines are retiring it, and the skies that once echoed with its four powerful engines are slowly falling silent. So, what really happened to the world's biggest passenger plane? Why did the A380 fail, and why might it soon disappear completely? Let's find out. The story begins in the 1990s. Airbus wanted to build something revolutionary, a giant that could break Boeing's monopoly with the 747. The A380 would be the largest, most luxurious and most advanced commercial aircraft ever built. It was a full double-deck design, capable of carrying more than 800 passengers in an all-economy layout, or around 500 in a typical three-class configuration. The idea was simple. Airports were getting crowded, and airlines needed a bigger aircraft to carry more people between major hubs. Instead of flying more planes, Airbus believed airlines could just fly bigger ones, and so began one of the most ambitious engineering projects in aviation history. Factories across Europe built different sections of the A380, wings in the UK, fuselage parts in Germany, tail assemblies in Spain, and final assembly in Toulouse, France. Entire roads and bridges had to be modified just to transport these massive pieces to the factory. The world's largest passenger aircraft took to the skies for the first time in April 2005, and in 2007, Singapore Airlines operated the first commercial flight. The public was amazed. Double decks, quiet cabins, private suites, bars and showers at 40,000 feet. The A380 felt like the future of flying, but behind the glamour, a storm was brewing. Airbus spent over 25 billion euros developing the A380. To make a profit, they needed to sell at least 400 of them, but the demand never came close. The timing couldn't have been worse. Just as the A380 was entering service, the aviation world was changing. Instead of concentrating passengers into massive hub airports like London, Dubai or Singapore, airlines were beginning to favor smaller, more direct routes. The hub-and-spoke model that the A380 was built for was being replaced by point-to-point -point flying. New aircraft like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and later the Airbus A350 could fly long distances efficiently with only two engines. They didn't need to carry 500 people to make money, so, and, they could serve smaller cities directly. Suddenly, the a 380 size became a problem, not a selling point. Fuel efficiency was another killer. The A380 had four massive engines, reliable, but thirsty. At a time when airlines were desperate to cut fuel costs and carbon emissions, the A380 simply couldn't compete with modern twin-engine jets. Each flight burned significantly more fuel per passenger, especially if the aircraft wasn't full, and filling an A380 every day is hard. Even major airlines struggled to keep load factors high outside of peak seasons. Air France, for example, admitted that their A380s only made money during the summer rush. Then came the infrastructure problem. The A380 was so big that only a limited number of airports could handle it. It needed specially reinforced taxiways, wider gates, and dual jet bridges to board both decks. For many airports, accommodating the A380 required expensive upgrades. And not all were willing to make that investment for just a handful of flights per day. That meant fewer routes, fewer airlines, and fewer opportunities to use the aircraft efficiently. By the late 2010s, it was clear the A380 wasn't selling. Emirates, the biggest supporter of the aircraft, operated over 100 of them and kept the program alive for years. But even they began scaling back orders. In 2019, Airbus finally made the painful announcement, the A380 program would end. The last aircraft rolled off the production line in 2021, marking the end of an era. And then, the pandemic hit. Almost overnight, global air travel collapsed, Airlines grounded entire fleets, and the huge expensive-to-operate A380s were the first to go. Carriers like Lufthansa, Air France, and Qatar Airways parked or permanently retired theirs. For a while, it looked like the A380 would never return to the skies, but not everyone gave up on it. As travel demand recovered, some airlines, especially Emirates, British Airways, Qantas, and Singapore Airlines, brought their A380s back. For them, the aircraft still had one big advantage, capacity. When travel boomed again in 2023 and 2024, airports were congested, and demand on major routes was enormous. The A380 could move huge numbers of people efficiently when it was full. So for a moment, the Super Jumbo made a small comeback. But make no mistake, 
the long-term trend hasn't changed. Operating the A380 is expensive, maintenance costs are high, spare parts are limited, and as the global fleet shrinks the cost of keeping them airworthy only increases. Even with Airbus still supporting operators, the economies of scale are fading. Many airlines have already decided it's not worth the cost. Air France, for instance, retired every single A380 from its fleet, scrapping or storing them permanently. HiFly, the only second-hand operator, also stopped flying its A380 because it simply wasn't profitable. Another issue is sustainability. With growing pressure to cut emissions, four-engine jets are becoming dinosaurs. The aviation industry's focus is on fuel-efficient twins and future technologies like hydrogen or sustainable aviation fuel. The A380, despite its impressive capacity, doesn't align with that future. So what happens now? As of today, Emirates still flies over 100 A380s and plans to keep them in service into the late 2030s. They're refurbishing the cabins with new interiors and premium economy seats to extend their lifespan. Other airlines, like British Airways, Qatar, and Singapore Airlines, are keeping a few in service for flagship routes such as London to Dubai, Sydney to Singapore, and London to Los Angeles. But beyond that, the list of A380 operators is shrinking every year. Most experts agree that by the 2040s, the A380 will likely disappear from regular passenger service altogether. Could the A380 ever return to production? It's extremely unlikely, even though some fans, and even Emirates executives, have called for a Neo version with new engines. Airbus has made it clear, there's no business case for it. The development cost would be enormous, and the demand simply isn't there. The market has spoken, airlines want smaller, flexible, efficient aircraft that can connect any two cities profitably. The age of the giants is over. Still, the A380 will always be remembered as an engineering masterpiece and a symbol of human ambition. It proved that we could build something extraordinary, even if it wasn't the commercial success Airbus hoped for. Passengers loved it. Quiet. Spacious. Comfortable. Many say it offered the smoothest ride ever experienced in the sky. And for that, the A380 will live on in aviation history, not as a failure, but as a legend. So next time you see an A380 takeoff, take a moment to appreciate it, because sooner or later, that sight and that sound will be gone for good. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into aviation history, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments. Have you ever flown on the A380? What was it like, and do you think we'll ever see another aircraft like it again? Until next time, clear skies, and see you in the next video.